that was the first time that I ever came into the gallery. That's I, the interesting part. Yeah. That's the other part. A lot of people don't even know it right. exists. Yeah. So what what's yeah. wrong? Why are we not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's Fremont is a fairly large yeah. city, right? right? But it's interesting. We know where all the shopping places That's are, right. but That's right. everybody yeah. knows where Costco is. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. But they may not yeah. know where. Coming to you straight from Fremont, California, this is the Fremont Podcast, dedicated to telling the stories of the past and present of the people and places of the city of Fremont, one conversation at a time. Hello, Fremont. This is Alicia. You are listening to episode 69 of the Fremont Podcast. Now, here's your host, Ricky B. Welcome back to the Fremont Podcast. Uh, I am... I'm excited to be outside today. Usually I'm in the basement of a coffee shop, uh, but today I am outside. I am, is this a courtyard? This is a courtyard. A courtyard of the Olive Hyde Art Gallery. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're over in Mission San Jose right now. Um, sh- give us your name and a little bit about yourself and what your relationship with Olive Hyde Art Gallery is. So my name is Manveen Kalyanpur. I'm currently the vice president of the Olive Hyde Art Guild. And I've been involved in the guild for since uh, 2005, I'm going to say. And you um, worked on the newsletter for a long period of time, you know, publishing the newsletter for our members. And the last two years, I've been vice president. And next year, the term ends and, you know, I take over as the president. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of a natural progression. It's you're a natural progression. You're the vice president and then... Yes, just the vice president, yeah. The other, other um, positions are not related okay. you know but yeah. that was just something that i did for like almost 15 20 years you okay. know and really enjoyed doing yeah. that too what so. are some of your responsibilities as the vice president right now so vice president's role may, mainly is to kind of like aid the president in a, and to learn because you know that the ne- after two years you're going to be president and there's like so much stuff going on so it's <laughs> more like a watch and learn uh the biggest responsibility is uh, to be a part of the nominating committee which okay. is going to pick people for the next so you know some board um positions are limited positions like the vice president the treasurer the secretary but the other positions like for example the newsletter you can do for as long as you want to the web design you know we have uh, Lisa who Stambog who's our web designer she's been doing it for a long time maybe 20 plus years too so okay. so it depends on the position and uh, uh, so main part was nominating and attending all the uh, meetings and helping Judy Anglin who's our president out in any way that uh, she needs help with you know that's great and as a part of the uh, actually last year we did some fun stuff so as a part of like the community thing she encouraged us to do things you know like we do capital improvements for example the the beautiful mosaic uh, trash can yeah, there that you that's see awesome. and yeah. the painting of the trellis and the matching so yeah. that was my idea that kind that's of spearheaded cool. that project yeah with the city yeah that's cool very yeah. good so yeah so let's clarify that real quick um so you said you're the vice president of the olive hyde art, uh, guild. art guild yes right that's okay correct. but this is the art gallery yes. and so the reason you said you worked with the city on these projects is because the city actually owns the art gallery is that yes. correct okay yes. so this is a city property we're sitting on okay. right yeah and it's the a, a property that was donated by a wonderful lady called miss olive hyde okay who passed away and she owned these buildings and she donated them to the city and she was a patron of the arts okay they converted it into an art gallery so this part is a gallery which is like the room next to uh, Mission Coffee Roasting so, so Company. The, so the building, yeah, closest to Mission Coffee, and then it's uh, further away from the um, mission, mission on the hill. Exactly. So that there's that building. And what, what did you say specifically so in that building? So it has three rooms in it, okay. and th- that's the actual gallery. Okay. okay. And then above it is basically storage and where we keep all our papers and okay. stuff like yeah. that. So uh, open to the public is like the three rooms. The gallery and there's at the a bottom restroom, yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's a little lobby. Okay. And this other building is uh is like it's it's also a house so both of these were houses oh. so it has a kitchen it has a bathroom and it the living room so it's like an open space it has a big kitchen 
and a huge storage space where we keep all the tables and chairs, yeah. you know. And these this property can be rented out by people, which okay. I'm sure if you ever drive by here on a weekend, yeah. you'll see Parties there's always or a party something going, going on. on. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful <laughs> place, you know, yeah. like nice and inclusive yeah. and there's lovely lights and, yeah. you know, and uh, up there people do music and, you know, you can do food. It's just wow. lovely. It's a and, lovely place. Yeah. And the building that you're talking about is the one higher up on the hill closest to the mission. Yes. Um, it was the it's the one building that I thought was primarily the gallery because it doesn't have a name on the front of the building up yes, here as well. Yes, okay. Yes. But the gallery is actually the actually lower the building. Actually, gallery is yeah. here. Okay. But that's that building supports us. So a lot of times, so when people rent out, they don't really rent out the gallery. They rent out the this courtyard yes. and this space. Okay. But uh, sometimes they also have classes here during the summer. Okay. You know, summer camp yeah. for children. Yeah. Uh, Fremont Recreation does classes and. And again, anybody can just rent it out for anything that they want. That's so, awesome. And when we have our receptions, then we use the kitchen over there to okay. bring out the food. So, yeah. So maybe let's clarify what the Guild is. So yeah, the tell, Guild yeah, is an organization. Guild? It's uh, made up of members. Um, and we are currently at about 200. And we also have business members who are, you know, supporters of the arts. And we support them in turn by giving them more business, you know. And um, we, our job is to, for example, do the receptions for all the um, exhibits that the city puts up. So the city takes care of putting up the exhibits at the gallery itself. Okay. And we take care of the opening receptions. Oh. And these are very lovely receptions. Yeah. You know, not like New York style receptions, <laughs> but they're, they're still Fremont lovely. Style. They're Fremont style. They're Fremont style. style. <laughs> but you should come to one of them. Okay. In fact, yeah. come tomorrow. To. There's oh, a beautiful one tomorrow. Uh, okay. because we have a members show. And they're typically on a Friday evening, 7 to 9. There's a beautiful wine bar that we have set up and we give out wine all this is you know wow. open and free yeah. to open to the public actually wow so That's we announce awesome. it to our members of course you know in our newsletter and other things but open to pub and then we have little canapes you know with members donate and um so there's tables set up there okay. yeah with uh food you know like That's snacks awesome. yeah, and stuff course. like yeah. that and very nice things yeah. so and uh, to i all at that moment when i come and i see the people and you know people are just having a nice glass of wine especially in the, when the weather is good you know when it's cold it's yeah. a little chilly <laughs> but it feels so beautiful just to see people mm. walking around it's like a community yeah. center and yeah. especially i'm going to say that it's more so for our senior population it's an outlet for them to come out and meet other mm. people talk to them you know that's great so it's a it i always think of it more as a community yeah. center especially this part of it right yeah. it's not just to see the art but it's also to talk to other people and interact with them yeah. it's an outlet yeah that's it's a fun great. evening out, basically, it. with yeah. wine. And we have a beautiful wine bar, which one of our members, who uh, who sadly passed away this year, he actually he uh, crafted it. It's a wooden, beautiful wine bar. Oh His name goodness. was Armand Stephens, and um, he donated it to the guild. So our members do a lot of stuff, you know. It's not just doing yeah. stuff for, yeah. you know, they go above and beyond and do, you know, like putting up the lights up. So, so things that we do for the thing, uh, for the cities, of course, the receptions, then we donate a lot of money to different charity organizations within Fremont and other. So the guild itself uh, is able to raise enough funds to be yes. able to donate yes. out. Oh, yes. That's yes. awesome. And, and we'll talk about yeah. how it does it. Yeah. So first I want to talk about first, what is it that we actually do? Yeah. So we help this receptions for the city. We like do capital improvements. For example, the mm -hmm. courtyard yep. improvement that the mosaic bin, those, those kind of capital improvements, the lights, we donate money for those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, we also donate money to local uh, nonprofits for certain things for example uh, the abode services for homeless yes, yeah. we donated like that that's great for typically for children's art books and supplies so we kind of target things related to art you know fremont library we donate money to fremont library that's great about a thousand dollars to ch purchase children's art books then to ohlone college for the students art exhibition uh, also to the juvenile hall for art related supplies wow. and books so, so, so let me ask you this: When you, so that this is amazing. Like you're doing a lot, uh, you're contributing a lot to the to the community. So, are where's the where are the where's the money coming from? Yeah. Is that is that from like um, donations from the volunteers, the members, or is that um, do you, are they part of like the? 
um, events that you guys host, does that also yes. raise yes. money for? So how yeah. do we raise the money? Yeah. So as you can hear, these numbers are pretty high. You know, like one thousand to the Fremont Library, Sarah Center Art Workshop is about two thousand five hundred every year. Okay. You know, that's it's a yeah. center for developmentally disabled adults. How do we make the money? Every year we have a gala which ha- used to happen around Christmas time, December. Okay. Then the pandemic happened. Yeah, right. So for a couple of years, nothing happened. And then last year, from last year, we decided to do in October so that to avoid the rush and, you know, during Christmas yeah. time, right? Yeah. So in, and at the end of October, that's our loan fundraiser for the year okay which is basically we set up and it's a lot of work to put that up and it's all done by the members you know and especially the board right they take care of a lot of things organizing things and so it's essentially a gala which is a party a lot of community donations go into that okay and local artists are invited to you know set up their stuff you know all sorts of stuff ceramic like the scarf that i'm wearing okay. you know fa- fabric yeah, i was gonna i was gonna ask that so it's a gallery so is it mainly visual arts or is it like um i mean yeah. that the scarf is it's beautiful visual. is that vi- yeah it's also visual it is also visual i can see it <laughs> yes you're right so it is it's not performing arts it's all visual okay. arts okay but the yeah. products that the artists who come during the uh, you know the gala and the holiday show it happens on a weekend three days friday night is a gala and then saturday sunday is the show okay. uh, you know so show and sale so it'll be ceramics photography um uh, other paint you know other painting okay. uh, watercolors We'll be right back with this conversation in just a moment. The Bay Philharmonic Guild held their 2023 Young Recitalist performance this past Sunday. Fremont's mayor was there and said a few words about music appreciation. Yes, we're at the end of April, but it's still Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month here in Fremont. The students, the young performers, were amazing. While this music is playing underneath me, realize these are 11 year olds, 14, some high schoolers. I found it really difficult to edit this piece because I just kept listening. Well, I didn't hear the whole thing, but I I thought from what I did hear, I thought it was wonderful. played in front of that many people like that and it like it looked so fancy and then like when I saw the programming it said like the Fremont mayor I got like so scared because I've never done that before but it was fun actually the children are just very talented and very well trained I think don't you think it's lovely wish I had that kind of opportunity when I was younger How was it up on stage? Um, it was pretty nice. It was okay. Yeah, it was okay. I guess whenever you're playing, you don't really focus on the crowd at yeah, all. Yeah, you don't even like to see them. Because if you look into the crowd, you sort of get distracted. <laughs> yeah, you don't So we, we try to look at each other or the music. Yeah, but looking at each other, we stay together. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah. Try to stay together. Try. To stay together. <laughs> Keyword. <laughs> and um, what do you, music-wise, what do you wish Fremont had more of? 
I think more like funding in school music yeah. groups because at least in ours also, we don't have much funding. My high school doesn't even have an orchestra. I go to like Washington. More education because like my elementary school cut out their band program. Cut out, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've been like cutting out elementary school and yeah. school programs. So you can't like, and start much early. harder in high school. Yeah. If you'd like to find out more about the Bay Philharmonic, go to bayphil.org. That's B-A-Y-P-H-I-L dot org. Dale Hardware is now ready to open their own pet center. Now you can get all of your pet supplies. You can get everything you need for your furry friends right at Dale Hardware. On top of that, Dale Hardware is the only hardware store in the country that has a destination center for Milwaukee tools. There are more Milwaukee tools under that roof than any other retail establishment in the country. Even with these big changes, the heart of Dale Hardware has not changed. So come on down to Dale Hardware and let a specialist help you find exactly what you're looking for with the type of care and attention that hasn't changed for over 65 years. Buying a home is a big decision. When I'm trying to make a big decision in my life, I turn to family. Family generally has my well-being in mind. They want the best for me. Whenever I visit Jennifer at Petroselli Homes in Niles, she treats me like family. If you're in the process of buying or selling a home, Turn to family. Turn to Petroselli Homes. Hello, Fremont. This is Andrew. Let's check in once again with Ricky after his class at Own It Fitness. Hey, Ricky. What's up, man? Uh, what was the hardest thing you did tonight? Yeah, the hardest thing I did tonight was the assault bike. Um, we had never done that before, so we've been uh, moving up in increments in our different exercises, and the assault bike is made to get our heart rate up really, really high. So we hadn't done that. The faster you go, the more resistance there is, and it just gets your heart cranking. It's, it works both your legs and your arms, and um, it was uh, it was it was quite exhausting when I got done. I needed a, a good breather after that. And where are we? Yeah, we're on the corner of Blakeau and Mowry. Uh, it's kind of hidden away, but if you Google it, you can find it pretty easily. If you just park in the parking lot behind the building, and you can find it right uh, right inside the uh, the little square here. If people want to go here, what should they do? Yeah, uh, Own It Fitness. Um, you can go to their Instagram. They post stuff there. You can also go to, um, uh, I believe, <laughs> I believe it's ownmyfitness.com. But you can look for Own It Fitness on Google, or you can go to their Instagram, and uh, you can connect with them there. They've got all kinds of personal training options. They've got class options. They've got a lot of different things going on, and they just expanded their space. So they practically doubled their workout space, um, which is fantastic. It gives a lot of room for everyone to be doing their own, their own workout. And now, back to our conversation. So for this particular gala, is it um, art, mainly art that is from your members, or can it be no, outside? No, 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 no. We, we solicit... You know, okay. from local artists from all over the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. They come from like northern, you know, California to like, you know, where whoever can yeah. drive up yeah. here and that's great. drop in their stuff. Yeah. So as a part of the gala, there's a ticket. Okay. So that's one of our fundraisers, right? So people buy a ticket. It's pretty, you know, minimal at like yeah. 25 dollars, and you buy the ticket and you get free food and wine and you get you get first dibs at the stuff which is at the <laughs> show and sale cool. which is always the most yeah. wonderful jewelry is a big seller christmas okay. stuff okay. ornaments those yeah. kind of things so all sorts of stuff yeah and so 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 part of the money is raised by those tickets which members you know call and then anybody can buy it's slightly less for members slightly more for uh, non-members okay and then uh, community folks give donations. For example, Fremont Bank always gives us a donation. That's great. You know, That's great. so they give a, a grant to us of two thousand every year, typically. Okay. And then we have a couple of uh, th three or four family foundations which give us donations for the. Uh, gala and the show and sale so that's how we basically cut. and then any stuff that people sell we get to keep 40% off the 
sales. So typically when there's a sale in the gallery, right? Any stuff in the gallery, most of the exhibits are actually things on sale. Hmm. So I, I, I'm not sure about this. I don't think the guild gets anything, but the city of Fremont gets a okay. cut for it. Okay. But when we do the gala and the show and sale, we get the cut. Okay. And I, I'm going to say maybe it's 25%. I'm not 100% yeah, sure on the sure, numbers. Sure. And then the uh, artist gets the rest of the money. So from that money is what we basically make all these uh, other donations. In fact, you'll be interested to know we just made a donation of $7,000 to the city of Fremont. Oh, wow. Because we made about 7000 from the sale of the okay. you know stuff last year wow. from the gala wow. and the show and sale and we donated that to the city and the city was really really thankful yeah. because expenses are really high you yeah. know like they take care of the maintenance of the garden mm -hmm. like we have volunteers who help out with the garden but they take care of like taking out the trash are and those like. i'm just curious the uh, like say that donate the donation that you gave are those particularly are they earmarked for a particular yes. thing in other words it's not just going into a big pot no. is it specifically for to help Fremont Recreation, okay. especially gotcha. the arts. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's cool. It's not fixing our roads for sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm yeah. glad that the the effort that you're doing to uh, bring attention and um, you know uh, exposure to the artists yes, and the art, art in the area is actually going to help. The money that you're raising is helping to go yes. uh, to help support other uh, opportunities. You know, like with the with the Recreation Department of Recreation mm -hmm. uh, to to go right back into that to keep to keep that going. That's really great. Yes. yes yeah. Yeah. So cool. So other things that the guild does is like we do this members juried show, which is the show right now we're having. Yeah. So our members who are a lot of them are artists, and then whatever art they do, you know, they will enter it into the and it's a juried show. They enter into you know you go through approval process. Yeah. So all of this takes a lot of work. You sure. know, it sounds sure. like it would be easy, but there's a, a lot of background. Yeah. stuff that goes on with that so so they have a show and sale and then um, that's a that's something that the guild runs but that happens every other year then another fundraiser that we somebody came up with the idea of doing little mini um, you know one by uh, what how much was it like five by five five inch by five inch mini project mini art they called it oh. and a lot of the artists donated that and then we had an online auction for that and every piece like sold out that's awesome you know, it was like $35 yeah. a piece so a lot of the artists yeah. donate their own stuff I also. actually I like I actually really like that I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you my own personal experience with uh, something like that hmm. so when I first moved here which was about nine years ago um, I went, you know, one of the places that I enjoyed visiting was uh, Monterey and Pacific Groves and then on down to Carmel by the sea. Um, and there were some really beautiful art galleries down in that mm -hmm. area as well. And uh, I remember uh, some friends of ours, they really love collecting art. They took us uh, to see some of the art galleries. And I mean, especially at that time, any of the art that was there was out far outside expensive. of our price range. It was that very is, expensive. Like there's just so no true. way I'm mean, I'm gonna take it home, right? Yes. But there we went to this one gallery and they had these small like I mean maybe it was five inch by five mm. inch. They were you know um they were done by the same artists mm. and they were just these small little pieces of art that were you could see that the you know that the design and the and everything the 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 elements of the creativity that were there were all the same in the larger mm, pieces, mm. but they were smaller and they had these small little like easel uh, things that you could set up. And I don't remember how much we paid for them, but I, Reasonable. But we bought, yeah. yeah, we bought like two or three of them and we yes. still have them up on our, on our counter, mm. or, uh, on our shelves in, in our house today. And I just remember thinking, I'm so glad that I was able to get something afford from that gallery that I could afford, you yes, know, yes. Um, you know, today now we have a few other art pieces that are more expensive and things that we've enjoyed that are in, up in our house. But um, I, I like the idea of being able to say I can come to an yes. art, sh art show and appreciate the larger pieces of art. Yes. But at the same time, being able to say I'd love to be able to bring some of that beauty back to home. my house yes. you know yes. and something that i could afford and i think that that's a really great way of going about that's it true. that's that cool. is so true yeah. yes art tends to be really expensive you go to san francisco and like you're saying monterey and some of these it's outrageously it expensive. Is. Yeah. i will say that our stuff is pretty affordable okay. in general but again like you said the bigger pieces but there's always something small for you to take home for sure especially at the you know show and sale 
because of it's functional and these days you know money's tight we have inflation yep. people want to buy beautiful things so functional things always sell well you know that's great like, like house, your scarf like my scarf and the- <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying that you we have the jury jury show going on right now and then you were talking about some other uh shows that you have going on yes yeah. yes yes so besides those two what are the other some are, is that pretty much the main ones that you have throughout the year from the guild's perspective, yes, okay. but the city of Fremont does a lot, right? Yeah, and they do the curator and uh, Gloria Kim, and uh, who is our like the recreation supervisor who kind of handles the gallery, and Irene Yordal, who's her manager. You know, they do a wonderful job of supporting us, and we support them, of course. Great. And then we have Leah Andrews, who's a new curator we've got. They pick really unique things, I must say. It's not like, you know, the same kind of material there'll be glass one time there'll be photography hmm. there'll be a bizarre fabric dropping kind of some fa- big artists you know there'll be all sorts of yeah, stuff that's great so it really opens your eyes as to what is art art hmm. is there in our daily hmm. lives yeah. right we don't yeah. sometimes art is not just a painting sure right you sure. know and last time we had like poetry and photography of like trees to go with it you know like such a beautiful awesome. combination yeah that was the first time we did something different yeah. you know like with poetry we even had a poetry reading for that the artist oh, had it cool. yeah. yeah so you know so like it was nice to see art in like different things in your daily yeah. life I'm, I'm curious now uh do you what is is there like the most what is the most daring piece of art that you've had or what is the most uh unusual or perhaps extravagant piece of art that you've had yeah so that's why i'm gonna say the fabric one i don't think it was fabric now so that's the kind of stuff stuff my son would say mom this is art you know like (laughs) you go to these big art galleries and you sometimes see these really bizarre pieces you know so it wasn't like a blank painting with a circle on it you know Mm -hmm. it was it was like i think i'm gonna say it was like maybe uh, fa- either fabric or a uh, straw or wood or something and it was like these interesting formations it huh. was nice to look yeah, at totally. you know yeah. but so that's the bizarre so thing funny. i did. but there there is stuff <laughs> like that every so often yeah. you know do you have do you have anybody or i mean is there and, and i'm not saying this is a bad thing i'm actually saying that i think that kind of like um kind of stretch the bound stretch the boundaries of some of the things you do but do you have influences or people feeling like we should go this direction or this direction or is there kind of like an expectation that's already set for what's here or is it kind of like open for other forms of art to be displayed i think it's very open so uh, that's what i meant to say is that gloria and leah and irene they do a wonderful job bringing Mm. unique things that's great exposure to the people in city of fremont who maybe never make it to san francisco or new york or london or other you know galleries in the world yeah exposure to something different Mm. in our own small little city here you know so yeah Yeah. so and i like that there's photography you know there's all sorts of stuff there'll be a glass exhibition then sometimes there are themes you may have like glass and there'll be like maybe three bay area artists and artists are sometimes local Mm -hmm. sometimes they're from outside the country uh, not the country but outside our area area. in fact uh, one year we even had a smithsonian traveling exhibit so the city does go out and do that's cool uh you know traveling exhibits with the big organizations sometimes so yeah i mean those kind of things take a lot to you know there's a lot of insurance and other things involved when you're borrowing their stuff for something like this but the city does do that that's cool that's cool and they use this space for that as well okay wow so but again we are restricted those to those three rooms but Mm -hmm. they're beautiful rooms and the curator does a wonderful job putting them up you know with They'll have different paint background depending mm. on the kind of stuff. Mm. You know, it's very presented in a very nice yeah. manner. You know, yeah. it beats any big gallery yeah. that I've been to in the world. So, That's cool. Yeah. So we've talked about the juried shows and some of the other things. So whose art is in in here? Like in the, uh, like I know that you said the curator kind of does a great job of being able to have this art on display but um who the the art that's in this like on display right now mm-hmm. like where did where did those come from so right now it's a juried show right okay so okay it's people so it's stuff. traded out yeah, after the show yes yes okay. it's how, returned how long, back yeah. how long is the juried show um on display oh you have a it's i think through so this is april is the arts and creative 
Creativity yes. Month. Yeah. So it started like April 6th online and okay. in uh, person in the uh, in the gallery. Okay. And it's through May 7th, I'm okay. going to say. Okay. Through the first week of May. Okay. Yeah. And then those pieces will be returned to the artist. Yes. And then what will go up then? Yes. Yeah, so then they'll, there's a next exhibit, which the city hasn't uh, told us yet. Ah. Uh, but we okay. don't have the details okay. of it yet. That'll be sometime in so June. I'm there's always like three weeks okay. or two, three weeks. You know, it takes time yeah. to put it yeah. down. And then That's and cool. some of them is sold, right? So yeah. anything that is sold then the city okay. will take yeah. that and i remember as a little boy my father would uh he had a um dark room down mm, in the basement room. of my wow. my house Serious right photography. so yeah so yeah. as a kid i remember going down there and helping him develop film and stuff and then my dad would talk to me about what you know what good photography was about f- composition so i've always had a camera I think probably as early as I can remember, I've had a camera that I've used, nice. and um, so I love photography. I don't know. I don't know if I would dare say that I'm a photographer, like a, mm. a you know, a photographer that takes amazing art. But if I wanted to apply in some way to have one of my pieces here, like what would that look like? What would it look like for me to try to have something on on display? in the gallery so i think for that you would have if it's a member show yeah then you would become a member member. and submit your stuff if you want to be a part of the holiday show and sale then when uh, when we start soliciting for new artists in fact we are soliciting new artists for the members for the holiday show and sale which is in october so you know in the art community our flyers go out and they know that there's a call for artists for photography for That's example great. and then you submit your stuff and then so those are the two main things other than that you'd have to be a fairly famous photographer f- <laughs> for your work to me. no so i'm I'd just have kidding to go, no i'd have to go to the i'd have to go to the the, the federal <laughs> somewhere and get my name changed to something like uh like ansel adams ansel i don't adams. know yeah, my name is ansel adams I'd like no to no but the city will reach out to slightly big names or okay. people they've heard of who who can handle a solo yeah. exhibit you yeah. know you'd have to have yeah. enough stuff to either have a solo exhibit or it could be a theme like once we had an interesting one which was about bookmaking you know hmm. you know do you know that's an art too bookmaking they is. make wow. little books huh. you know so uh, off like different uh, uh, they take different kinds of paper and they cut and that's paste awesome. themed stuff so it's a Bay Area thing. There's yeah, an organization awesome. in the Bay Area. And uh, like there's an artist called Michael Sanzeri. He does assemblage art. Okay. He takes little bits of pieces. So his work was in our uh, holiday show and sale. You know, like um, an antique stuff, like an old uh, tooth powder yeah. tin can. Yeah. And yeah. he'll make a little man out of it. <laughs> you know, and you can use it to hang your jewelry or stuff. So creative stuff like that. That's I mean, cool. People are just amazingly yeah. creative. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. absolutely mind-boggling yeah. what they can come yeah. up with yeah i love the i love the things that you're talking about too because i do like kind of the um recycling of of human elements you Absolutely. know we have things that we use for a short time and then it's like what do, what, what do we do with it now you know and i think i love the idea of taking something that has been used and and kind of lived its life but then finding a new a new life for it That's so really you were cool. talking yeah. about Unique one. So now, now that you mentioned recycle, okay. I remember. So this artist now, she's somewhere in the South Bay. I'm sorry, I forgot her name, but she made dresses out of like use wrappers. So for example, it was oh my goodness, little wow. wrappers of let's say a candy, huh. you know, which she collected all of those. And they were, so for example, and she had like little themes of them. So she had a Marie Antoinette dress that she made with CNH, you know, it was CNH sugar all over. And then the, what is the baking powder, the Clabber Girl baking powder stuff. That's awesome. She took those little, can you imagine how much work? And she even had two models who were walking around. (laughs) So they were themed and it was so clever. That's one of my, like, was a wonderful show. And one would never know that somebody like that exists. Exists, you yeah. know? I think she's like a high school teacher somewhere. I'm That's really forgetting cool. her name, but wow. so it was really cute. So That's and awesome. so she had a mannequin of Marie Antoinette who was wearing that dress made with all candy related stuff, holding a cake and let them eat cake Beautiful. was like the title. So they were very clever. Yeah. They were all made of like different themes and stuff. That so that is yeah. really, yeah, yeah. really, really cool. So one of the things that the guild does, you know, as a part of uh, if you're a member, we have little programs. So like for example, the are artist Dimitri who did our mosaic bin Uh, so we set up programs on like uh, a Tuesday or a a Wednesday or a Thursday depending on which day of the week sometimes over here but we'll do like a demo where you can come in and uh, 
make a little tile work piece, for example, you know, okay. or a silk That's artist cool. did a demo yeah. and you get to take a little piece of that home, right? That's awesome. So, so about once a month, approximately, we have these programs which are open to the members. Sometimes they are over here in the mission room, you know, or we have field trips where we have like a docent tour of, uh, you know, the MoMA, wow. uh, San Francisco MoMA, for example. That's, That's cool. a little more involved because you have to figure out carpool and, you know, yeah. pay for yeah. it and everything so stuff like that that's yeah. awesome and there's a photography trip by scott cape and coming up so he's gonna do a photograph how do you photograph wildflowers at the shin house you know that's oh something goodness, that's sometime awesome. in may we're yeah. gonna have that so and that's also part of the guild that's a part okay. of the guild so wow. so so that's something we do for our members to get them again more involved and on april 20th you know as a part of the fremont creates we have a, a social and then we're also going to do docent tours of the gallery itself for anybody who wants to take a part, you know, part like anybody who wants to come in, so open to the members. Yeah, it's kind of like what we did for Better Block, yeah, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because and yeah, and speaking of Better Block, that was the first time that I ever came into the gallery. That's I, the interesting part. Yeah. That's the other part. A lot of people don't even know it right. exists. Yeah. So what? What's yeah. wrong? Why are we not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's Fremont is a fairly large yeah. city, right? Right. But it's interesting. We know where all the shopping places that's are, right. but that's right. everybody yeah. knows where Costco is. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. But they may not yeah. know where. <laughs> well, I think that I think that's a good conversation too, because I do think that um, one of the things that um, you know, there's a lot going on right now in the country. There's you know, you have different political agendas. You have a lot of things in the climate. You have a lot of you know, but you know, and and so you have a lot of people investing heavily into things like that. But you know, I think what would you say about why uh, a person should pay attention to the arts? You know, why with everything that, that might be distracting us or, you know, all mm. the Costco runs that we <laughs> need yes. to make, yeah. like, what is it about art and, um, and, and noticing, stopping to, stopping to notice art? What is it about? What about, what about it is, is good for our communities? So it's, I think it's for all of us. It's good to take that pause and look around, appreciate beauty. And art can be sometimes political too, right? Art is not just mm. beautiful. Yeah, that's it good. makes, as they say, it makes the uncomfortable comfortable and makes the comfortable person uncomfortable. Oh, so it's a little yeah. bit of both, right? Yeah. But so in terms of making us comfortable, it definitely gives you a pause. Make, it's something beauty, you know, it's something to enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, in the late uh, 90s, especially in the early to 20, 2000s, uh, we were talking so much about STEM. It's all about tech. And, you know, we are here in the Bay Area. I myself work in tech, right? Yeah. So it's all about technology and STEM, right? Mm. And then yeah, finally right. they realized they need that A in there for oh. the STEAM, right? Yeah, the art right. is necessary. Right. Yeah. Like, why do Apple products do so well? Because they look beautiful. Mm. So things, beautiful. we all love having beautiful things things right. around us right. so so it's definitely one part is to just for you to make a pause make you think may, and how uh, i just appreciate creativity in whichever yeah. way people can and so, sometimes like you said it can be using like mosaic used to be using little bits of piece discarded uh you know your crockery or whatever that's broken and they would assemble it yep. and make yep. something beautiful yeah. out of yeah. it you know so it's using up of stuff also right that, that uh, that's how a lot of art was yeah. also done right yeah. Yeah. not just a portrait of myself or the next generation yeah. to see you know whatever so 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 that's a part of definitely uh, art appreciating art and uh, stopping to think about it is good for our soul for sure that's great. and god knows we need it yeah. in this this day and age that's you know great. with how things are going and like now we're realizing there's so much talk about ai and chat gpt and everything right so um, that stuff can be taken in a very negative way. I wish we would go more towards art side, to, towards the more uh, liberal arts, hmm. you know, and make us just think and uh, talk a little bit more about being um, not just tech based, yeah. but human based. That's great. Human based. But, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Art comes from, it's an expression of our, I mean, I guess, I guess technology is uh, some form of an expression of our, of our human you existence, but that. I think yeah. art is kind of a, more of a visual. I think technology, I mean, I think one of the advantages slash disadvantages of technology is that it kind of speeds things up and it kind of rushes 
gives us more ac- gives us access to more things. I think art kind of slows us down, yes, it and it does. gives us the opportunity to focus yes. on what's immediately around us. You know, and I think that's really really great. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. So thank you for your time today. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, this has pleasure. been amazing. I am um, looking forward to um, experiencing some of the galas and some of the other events that you have here, and I hope that uh, more people in our community come out and take yes, advantage of yes. of the Olive Hyde. Absolutely, uh, we art always gallery. have articles in the Tri City Voice, but you know pub- about our yeah. different stuff that's going yeah. on and city website and stuff. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, so if I wanted to become a member of the guild, mm-hmm. what do I need to do? You go to olivehideartguild dot org and it says join. <laughs> <laughs> and is there a cost to that? It, or? It's thirty five dollars yeah. okay. for a family, and for seniors there's okay. a discount. I okay. think it's twenty five. Yeah. Cool. Don't quote me on any of the numbers. No. I don't no, remember. No, that's fine. I understand <laughs> you put people on the spot, yeah. and then yeah. the numbers change. Because because yes, obviously inflation yeah, and everything yeah. else. So I get that. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's very so. helpful. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've enjoyed this and look forward to uh, um, maybe tomorrow night. Please do come. Okay. Enjoy the wine and the art and meeting the beautiful community we ha- have yeah. here, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. Be uh, better block. I enjoyed yeah. that. So I'm, I'm sure it's, it'll be beautiful tomorrow night too. So. Thank you. Thank you. This episode was hosted and produced by Ricky B., I'm Gary Williams. Andrew Cavett is the editor. Music is provided through Soundstripe.com. You can find links to our social media and other content at thefremontpodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you listen so you don't miss an episode. And if you're so inclined, leave a kind review so that others can find the podcast. Join us next week on the Fremont Podcast. This is a Muggins Media Podcast.